Thank you for considering the Corporate Cowboys podcast. As we continue, Hitman Online, a technical manual for independent contractors. Originally published in 1983 by Pilot and Press, written by Rex Farrell. Narrated today by yours truly, Alex. <clears throat> we want to keep this operation nonprofit and have these audiobooks come to you at, uh, let's say, regular intervals. Go ahead and visit us online via Instagram, via Patreon. Subscribe. All donations go towards expenses and legal fees, as always. Before we begin, there is a warning on behalf of the author, the publisher, and myself. And it goes a little like warning. It is against the law to manufacture a silencer without an appropriate license from the federal government. There are state and local laws prohibiting the possession of weapons and their accessories in many areas. Severe penalties are prescribed for violations of these laws. Neither the author, nor the publisher, nor myself, Alex, the narrator, assume responsibility for the use or misuse of information contained in this book. It's for informational and educational purposes only. So don't hit me up. Don't hit me up regaling me with stories of fucking conquest and um, and fuckery. I don't want to hear about it unless I'm directly involved. (laughs) Chapter 8. Danger. Danger. Ego, women, and partners. Controlling your situation. And so we begin. Danger. Ego, women, and partners. No matter how well you have your act together in other ways, The whole show can come tumbling down when it's shaken by any one of three interferences. Ego, women, partners. Let's look at these. First things first. Egos. Now that you're back home after your first rendezvous with destiny, everything seems to have changed. The people you have suddenly become so aggravatingly ordinary. You start to view them as an irritating herd of pathetic sheep doing as they are told doing what is expected, following someone, anyone, blindly. You can't believe how dumb your friends have become and your respect diminishes for people you once held in awe. You too have become different. You recognize that you made some mistakes, but you know what they were, and they will never plague you again. Next time, in parentheses, and you know there will be a next time, there will be no hesitation, no fear. Man, that... I mean, this author does a good job at some points and in beginning this chapter, this is commentary, and beginning this chapter, they come off with uh, quite quite the fucking ego. Quite the ego. Never never put anything past anybody. Never assume somebody is just what? What's he say here? A pathetic sheep following people blindly. That's how you get whacked. That's how you yourself get put on somebody's shit list. And if they're... If their fuse is shorter than yours, if they're more pathological about things than you are. <clears throat> Anyways, your experience in facing death head on had taught you about life. You have the power and ability to stand alone. You no longer need a reason to kill. Doubt it. We just read in the preceding chapter that it's about money, was it not? Go ahead and listen to, uh, what is it, part eight. And you'll figure it out. Or you'll it, it'll cue you in. It'll clue you in on what's taking place so far in the manual. You have the power and ability to stand alone. You no longer need a reason to kill. When the guys all get together and the bullshit starts to flow, you find it hard to listen to their tales of how tough they like to think they are. Their threats to get this person or that become as irritating yet harmless as a swarm of gnats on a hot summer afternoon. You stifle the urge to tell them how life really is. You control your anger at their pretension of being capable of carrying out the threats they make. You resist the impulse to laugh at the statements they take so seriously. Your friends sense your irritation, but don't understand what has set you apart. You begin to shun social gathering and bullshit sessions, You spend more time studying and accumulating and testing your tools while you wait for the next job opportunity to present itself. 
This this is uh, a <clears throat> comment commentary. This is this is pretty realistic. That this is realistic. This part. You find yourself making it a point to become on friendly terms with anyone who can be of use to you. Anyone who you feel has something worthwhile to offer in the advancement of your career. Your mind is like a sponge. You eagerly soak up any rumors about available weapons, new combat techniques, and the like. Like the great white shark, you have become a lone predator. Your ego is the greatest burden you will carry from this day forth. You have feelings and emotions that you might need to share with some understanding person. The things you have learned about life are important. You may wish to pass them on to someone you care about. When the bullshit starts to flow, you may feel compelled to set the record straight and tell those morons how it really is. When someone starts to brag in confidence about something he's done, the intimacy of the moment, the shared confessions, may inspire you to do a little bragging of your own. Or you may want to overawe some new woman in your life with your masculinity and you feel the urge to shock her just a little by hinting at your true profession. Start now in learning to control your ego. This means, above all, keeping your mouth shut. You are a man, without a doubt. You have proved it. You have come face to face with death and emerged a victor through your cunning and expertise. You have dealt death as a professional. You don't need any second or third opinions to verify your manhood. Don't brag. Don't boast. Don't hint at what you know and what you have done. Don't confide in your girlfriend, your wife, or your best buddy. Only insecure bores must build themselves up by other people's opinions. The way you use and display the money you made will also be a reflection on your ego. If you have never before had this much cold hard cash at one time, it may be burning a hole in your pocket. <laughs> That's really well written, actually. That sentence right there. If you have never before had this much cold hard cash at one time, cold hard cash, it may be burning a hole in your pocket. It's so cold, it's so icy that it's burning a hole through your pocket. You have to take it out. You have to, you have to burn it. You have to spend it. You get the feeling that you have to show off a little bit, buy a little drip, and that'll get you caught up. Should you let it flow like water? I get it, drip. That was pretty. That was that was a good little setup. Should you let it flow like water, in keeping with your decision to enjoy yourself while you can, instead of accumulating wealth? Part of that money should be put away for living expenses and overhead. You never know how long you will go between jobs. And you do need to stock up on the best equipment available. Some of it can be spent purchasing items you never could afford before. But the things you can buy, uh, ha- but the things you can buy, but the things you can buy of have special limits. I guess that sentence passes. That's uh, that's a stylistic difference. I- I'm not really comfortable with it grammatically, but uh, <clears throat> it reads fine. But the things you can buy of have special limits. Unless you have additional sources of income to justify large expenditures like a new home, paying off an old mortgage, or a new sports car, don't spend any of your earnings on big items of this type. Big expenditures arouse suspicion, not only of your family and friends, but of the IRS and the authorities if you should ever come under investigation. Sure, it would make you feel good to walk in and and pay for it. hold on sure it would make you feel good to walk in and pay for a new $2500 stereo set with $100 bills damn this is the 80s stereo sets were costing $2500 $2500 that's <clears throat> yeah i mean i guess i remember a piece of it Sure, it would make you feel good to walk in and pay for a new $2,500 stereo set with $100 bills, with crisp, crisp, clean $100 bills. And flashing around that kind of money in a bar might get immediate attention you desire from the best looking woman there. But control is the key now. It is far better to have a wallet filled with old 20s than questionable new $100 bills. Just remember, you are secure within yourself. 
you don't need to impress anyone else in any way, shape, or form. If you have been living in a small, unimpressive apartment, stay there for the time being. Later, you will learn methods for legally changing your lifestyle to fit your income. But the changes must be gradual, not overnight. Conspicuous moves. If you have a regular job, keep working at it for a while to substantiate the source of money you are spending. The money you made is rightfully yours. The risks you took, the dangers you faced, and the fact you carried it all off successfully prove you earned it. But unless you have always carried and flashed large sums of cash and enjoyed the finer things of life, free spending and extravagant purchases now will arouse suspicion and start tongues wagging. In short, don't change your lifestyle dramatically unless you can justify your sudden increase in wealth. Commentary, commentary. If, yeah, if your rationale is that you hit the fucking lotto, right? Don't go out the next day and start picking up sports cars, start picking up suits and shoes and buying new accessories, watches and jewelry. <clears throat> Keep it all low pro. Keep it all low key. Low profile, low key. <clears throat> Women. Because of their uncanny ability to get into places and situations a man might fight hard to duplicate, because of their deceitful game-playing natures, and because a woman can be twice as vicious as a man, a woman can be a better hired executioner than a man. Fortunately for the world, a woman usually makes only one man her target, and the nesting instinct quickly takes her off the street and ties her down to the little world of babies, laundry, and housework she creates and protects for her own. Unfortunately, even a hitman cannot deny that what women have to offer is a basic necessity. A married man who becomes a hitman for hire, or a single professional who alter ties the knot, who alter ties the knot of matrimony, yeah, faces a whole set of woman problems peculiar in themselves. Once a woman becomes the proclaimed property of one man, she feels it's her duty to ward off other predators, whether real or imaginary, through suspicion, jealousy, accusation, or even by becoming her own detective to protect and preserve her rightful place. A married professional is then placed in the predicament of either telling his wife everything or nothing. And either way, she will have to be a very understanding woman. For if she knows too much, she could become his own enemy on the face of the earth and may someday have to be eliminated in the name of self-preservation. And if she knows too little, her suspicious, jealous nature could lead to more snooping and following and conjecture on her part than is healthy for either of them. I read an account in the newspaper recently about a man who was accused and later convicted of murdering the state's witness against him in another trial. It seems he lured his witness into taking a ride with him under the pretense of having no hard feeling about the testimony that was about to go down. Instead, he took the would-be state's witness to a desolate rock quarry, blew his head off with a shotgun close range, and then tossed him into an alligator-filled pit. That commentary, that, that seems exaggerated a little bit. An alligator pit near a desolate rock quarry. Okay, okay. Unless, hold on, unless uh, a close range then toss them. I mean, unless they traveled with a body. Unless they carried it out the rock quarry. Unless they just went to the rock quarry to perform the execution and then moved it to an alligator pit for the disposal. But uh, besides that, I mean, I think that was too loosely written there. From another spot, he caught because, I, like, again, I think they could have summarized it or paraphrased it by just eliminating the state's witness. But I get to have to introduce a little creativity, a little imagination, a little exercise, a little treat for the imagination to be able to uh, illustrate inside of one's mind. <clears throat> From another spot, he called his wife to come get him. In the car on the ride home, he told his wife about what he had done, 
bragging about his cunning to lure the mark to his death. The sympathetic wife listened, glad that the death of the witness would surely save her husband from spending time in prison. Later, the only person the wife told about the incident was her mother, and the only person the mother told about the incident was her son. A few months, <laughs> the only per yo, the only person can become a lot of people. <clears throat> Write that down. The only person can become a lot of people. Can become a lot of people. Later, the only person the wife told about the incident was her mother. And the only person the mother told about the incident was her son. A few months later, the wife caught her husband in bed in a compromising situation in the family boat with the naked woman. She fired a few shots over the heads of the two lovers and the police came. In her hurt and anger at his infidelity after making her an accomplice to his crime, she told the authorities about the murder. The moral of the story is that if you choose to be tied to one woman, make sure she is capable of being your partner in crime. Sharing with her the fruits of your joint efforts equally and keep reminding her in subtle ways that if detected, her part in any conspiracy is just as great as yours. Yeah, so it's saying here, share with her the fruits of your joint efforts equally. It's pretty much saying... Make her an equal partner. Make her an equal partner. If you could turn her, for lack of a better concept, I suppose, if you could turn her out, you can make her an equal partner. She goes from becoming an alibi, potentially you develop a, uh, a significant other, a partner as an alibi in life, and you make them an, an actual accomplice, someone who uh, works with you, shoulder to shoulder. Side by side. Never let your roving eye of hunger for a little something strange on the side come to her attention. Women are highly emotional, rarely rational creatures. Is 10 minutes of pleasure worth your life at the hands or tongue in parentheses of an irate spouse? Irate means pissed off, just a pissed off spouse. If you piss your spouse off, they'll bury you. Bury you either with their hands or with their tongue. By snitching. Get it? In the true story above, the man who killed the witness and confided in his wife probably really did love his wife. He probably would have never considered telling the woman on the boat about the murder. The first thing he didn't count on was getting caught with the other woman and the jealous rage and accusation that ensued. The second thing he didn't count on was his wife confiding in her mother and her mother confiding in a son. All of which came out in testimony at court, resulting in his conviction. Ideally, a professional hitman will remain single. He will either purchase his sexual pleasures or participate in impersonal one-night stands. His involvement with women will only be on a sexual level. He will not live with them, nor will he let them invade his privacy. In most cases, they won't even know his real name. And he will never, as a, what, he, and he will never, uh, the manual cuts off right here, and he will never blank, and then it's, the next sentence is literally, as a man, as a man, I appreciate as much as anyone a good looking body and a warm, willing smile on a woman. What? And he will never... <clears throat> Marry? Um, he will never marry, never move in with the woman. He will never get caught lacking with the woman. He will never not use protection. I don't know. He will not live with them, nor will he let them invade his privacy. In most cases, they won't even know his real name. And he will never, you fill in the blank with your fucking imagination. As a man, I appreciate as much as anyone a good-looking body and a warm, willing smile on a woman. As a professional, however, that seems to have lost some of its thrill as I've moved on to bigger, more exciting, and more dangerous prey. Yo, my nigga became a predator. In a much more 
much more carnal, much more visceral sense. <clears throat> that happens, I guess. As a professional, however, that seems to have lost that seems to have lost some of its thrill as I've moved on to bigger, more exciting, and more dangerous prey. I suppose that's a that's a that's a normal feeling to arise, especially in the corporate setting. As a corporate cowboy, a lot of a lot of things that bring basic pleasure in life tend to you tend to lose their shine, tend to lose their luster, their 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 fucking their glimmer. Um, that might be why a lot of like if I were to equate this to like street thugs, that that might be why a lot of street cats have to pick up a lot of jewelry. They they, they want to shine. They want they want to look. Um, for lack of a nicer word, they want to look sparkly. They want to stand out. Why? Because they're deep in the shit. They're in hell. They work in the dark, and so they gotta. They have to shine. Um, not artificially. I mean, it's not an artificial shine because if we're gonna go off of uh, what this author has written, they've earned the money that they've gotten. They've earned the reputation the jewels, the drip that they've managed to get their hands on. Uh, they've earned it in, in their own unique sense, but uh, they, they may not appreciate what they see in the mirror. What they see in the mirror might be darker, and so they have to outline and accent and accessorize what they see in the mirror with something that shines. You know, a little light in the darkness. Damn, I got a little deep. I got a little too deep. <clears throat> Partners. Ironically, the best professional partner you can have is a woman. But she has to be a full-time partner and she has to have the following qualifications. Good looks and a seductive attitude. Superior intelligence. No children or close family ties. Total dedication to you. A totally vicious nature towards outsiders quote unquote no conscious the mental and physical capability of defending herself and pulling her own weight for such a woman you can expect the ability to get almost any mark based on her good looks seductiveness and willingness to go to any length to help you the intelligence to help you plan successful jobs and to provide you with continuously stimulating conversation and companionship sex on a regular basis without danger of blowing your cover an unflinching backup due to her emotional attachment to you those are great those are great i'll read them one more time the qualifications i'll number them for you if uh you the listener choose to write them down one good looks and a seductive attitude two Superior intelligence. Three, no children or close family ties. Four, total dedication to you. Five, a totally vicious nature towards quote unquote outsiders. Six, no conscience. Seven, the mental and physical capability of defending herself and pulling her own weight. For such a woman, you can expect, and these are numbered one through four, one, the ability to get almost any mark based on her good looks, seductiveness, and willingness to go any lengths to help you, two, the intelligence to help you plan successful jobs and to provide you with continuously stimulating conversation and companionship, three, sex on a regular basis without danger of blowing your cover, and four, an unflinching backup due to her emotional attachment to you. Essentially, that's a person who's not afraid to pull and squeeze a trigger when, when it's warranted, when it's necessary. Unfortunately, not too many such women exist. <laughs> Shit, son. Reality check. Unfortunately, not too many such women exist. And those who do will be hard to find since, by necessity, they will be as cautious and untrusting as you are. Some women have these latent qualities, 
but are in need of someone like you to bring them out and perfect them. If you are interested in forming such a relationship, check for lone women who sign up for mercenary training classes, visit gun shows, and own their weaponry. And own or know? And know their weaponry? Yeah, I guess, I guess. Because we're looking for a professionally qualified woman, right? So check for lone women who sign up for mercenary training classes, visit gun shows, and know their weaponry. Or look for her among those hardy fanatical individuals who make up survival groups. She could be anywhere though. So while you're feeling a good woman up, feel her out also. If you're interested in adding a permanent partner. And good luck. Yeah, if you're interested in adding the woman you are with currently as a personal partner to your professional career... Obviously, you want to feel them out. You want to gauge them. You want to you want to get to know them, vet them, vet them appropriately. Assuming you have been fortunate enough to find your HMIW, that's the hitman's ideal woman. <laughs> okay, He's, they're coining it at this point. They're coining uh, what was it? Those previous seven qualifications and four expectations. Assuming you've been fortunate enough to find your HMIW, the hitman's ideal woman, you will from time to time require a partner to assist you on a particular job. The need may arise due to the mark's use of bodyguards or other defensive procedures and inaccessibility that must be overcome through diversion or even language barrier. Whatever the reason, the partner you select will be a man you can trust and who can be depended on to cover your back. Okay, they, they return to using man. Uh, I guess that makes sense. They've been talking about, they've been, they made this manual, the author has made this manual exclusively about hit men, where at some points I've, uh, I've went ahead and generalized either the hypothetical hit person or the mark i.e. the victim, and the uh, employer. Anybody could be a man or a female. It could be a fucking female detective that gets you arrested, a female judge that sentences you for life, female prison guard that, I don't know, ends up murking you for outside money. Um, yeah, I mean, don't don't put anything past anybody. Uh, any Anybody... Anyone could be a professional. I've learned that much as a corporate cowboy. Anyone could be a professional. In some instances, even those individuals under 18, they've just got to be capable. They've got to be savvy. They've got to be up there, up there in intelligence. And they've already have to have some kind of onset pathological issue. But they exist. They fucking exist. They, yeah, don't be surprised, man. Women and children get it too. Whatever the reason, hold on, um, ba, 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 you will from time to time require a partner to assist you on a particular job. The need may arise due to the mark's use of bodyguards or other defensive procedures and inaccessibility that must be overcome through diversion or even language barrier. Through diversion by, dist by distracting or a language barrier. Maybe it's just finessing, just finessing a motherfucker. If you can hustle a motherfucker on the street... You can learn to hustle in corporate. It's not difficult. Just It literally takes one step, and that's learning. You got to learn to hustle in corporate. You have to learn corporate, understand corporate, be a corporate cowboy. Whatever the reason, the partner you select will be a man you can trust and who can be depended on to cover your back. He will meet the same rigid requirements you have set for yourself and you will not be lacking, hold up, he will meet the same rigid requirements you have set for yourself and will not be lacking in basic common sense. Yeah, that makes sense. If you choose a partner, if you choose a partner, you have to be smart about who you choose, how how far you can trust them, whether you decide to compartmentalize the mission so they only handle pieces of it. And uh, not the entire 
not the entire scope of objectives because, you know, they get caught, they get popped. They could start pointing fingers for individual issues. He will meet the same rigid requirements you have set for yourself and will not be lacking in basic common sense. He will be discreet and not a braggart. He will be self-assured to the point that you don't have to worry about his ego. He will be totally business-minded while doing business and will not be sidetracked by women or other pastimes. When the job is going down, he will willingly pump one or two of his own bullets into the mark to ensure equal responsibility. Whether male or female, your partner is equal to 50-50 compensation. Everything should be 50-50. Equal pay for equal risk and equal responsibility. This is an insurance measure for both of you. Generally, a professional prefers to work alone, but when a partner is required, the same caution must be used as in controlling one's ego and electing one's woman. Generally, I'll repeat that. Generally, a professional prefers to work alone, but when a partner is required, the same caution must be used as in controlling one's ego and selecting one's woman. Patience is a virtue, my grandmother used to say, and patience is something a hitman needs plenty of. Not only will you require patience while you are stalking your prey and waiting for the right moment to make your kill, but also in areas like feeling out the potential employer and looking for a suitable partner. You may be on pins and needles, anxious for the next job to come along or for a partner you can trust. These things don't come overnight. If you meet someone who seems as radical as you, test them over a period of time in your own subtle way to see if he really measures up. Gust, gut first impressions can't be relied on here. I'll repeat that. If you meet someone who seems as radical as you, test them over a period of time in your own suitable way to see if he really measures up. Gut impressions can't be relied on here. Or gut first impressions. You could have just gone with first impressions. I mean, you could you could trust gut instinct, but the way it's written here, gut first impressions can't be relied on here. The way it's written in this sentence uh, doesn't make the, the most um, the most uh, philosophical sense, I suppose. The most grammatical sense. Gut first impressions can't be relied on here. Give him a while to prove himself. See how free he is with his conversation. How much does he know about weapons? Is he emotionally stable? How does he handle his personal life? Is it in shambles of bad relationships and creditors knocking at his door? How a man thinks, lives, and acts is just as important as his marksmanship and fighting ability. And many an insecure fool needing to prove his manhood will give the impression of being capable to assist you. Beware. Beware. There's a lot of motherfuckers with insecurities believing they have something to prove out there that will hold themselves out to be professionals and will leave you hanging at the last moment. Been there. Seen it. Been there. I've seen it. That concludes chapter 8 of Hitman online. And it technical, a technical manual for the independent contractors. For independent contractors. Hitman online. A technical manual for independent contractors. Originally published by Pilot and Press. 1983. Written by Rex Farrell. You know what? I can kind of appreciate. I can kind of appreciate uh, the pseudonym now a little bit. It just means Wild King. I get it. I get it. Or or un, uncivilized king. Yeah, I get that. Um, as a king, you have to look out for number one. So in that sense, you are very logical, very rational. And the feral part just means that you live by your own rules. In a very logical, very rational state of being 
Sounds like a consummate professional to me. Sounds like it. Never seen the author, never met the author. Author might be dead for all we know. Until next time.